Hey everyone, big warm welcome back to the channel. In today's video I want to talk about um, like the effects ataxia has on body composition and a bit about exercise and stuff. So let's get on with it. As I've mentioned many a time before and I'm sure a lot of you are already aware, there is no cure as such for ataxia. Um, the general consensus is that exercise and physiotherapy is like the only recognised, not cure, but like way to alleviate the symptoms. Um, and so I like try and do as much exercise and physiotherapy as I possibly can. But again, the wonderful condition of ataxia being the absolute ass wipe that it is, has made this hard for me as well. There's a load of physical problems that ataxia brings to the table. The obvious one being, of course, it makes you stumble around like a wasted zombie, which, by the way, I think is where Katy Perry got the inspiration for the smash it song, Chain to the Rhythm. Um, so you're welcome for that, Katy. But um, for me, personally, and um, I'd be interested to hear if um, any other people that have ataxia uh, suffer with this. I have little to no functional strength. Don't get me wrong, I'm still as strong as an ox when it comes to the old weights and that. And I still make a habit of bench pressing, skips and cars etc. But when it comes to doing stuff that you actually need to do, like, I don't know, getting, like, putting stuff up on shelves or carrying, like, shopping bags, then I'm as weak as a kitten, to be fair. Luckily, there is actually a more scientific explanation of this phenomenon than just being weak, and that is that ataxia itself um, is caused by shrinkage of the cerebellum. I'm trying my hardest not to say celery there, because um, I've done about a million takes of this and I keep saying celery. But um, I think I made it that time. Um, yeah, it's caused by shrinkage of the cerebellum. Did it again, cerebellum, and um, the re and because so because people with ataxia's cerebellum is smaller, it sends less messages. But it seems though that it still sends them unevenly. And um, in my case, it sends more to um, the right side of my body, creating the illusion that I'm like a bit lopsided and wonky. Because the limbs on the right side of my body get more of the messages, they do more. So they become stronger and like more developed, uh, which is why if you ever met me in real life, or even like watched any of my videos or even in this video you can see that my right side is like more I don't know really how to explain it just more sort of sort of upright and my left side is like a bit like limp and it looks like a bit sagging this is where the problems with exercise come into play because it's really hard to like exercise both sides of my body equally. So no matter what, because of the overcompensation from my stronger right side, it like takes over and it sort of covers for the slacker, which is the left side of my body, like my left arm and my left leg. So um, like the right always gets more overdeveloped. I know this isn't the most serious symptom of ataxia, more of like a minor like side effect. And granted, there's a lot worse things going on in the world at the moment, but it's a bit of an inconvenience. Um, I know that, however, that I've just got to keep being patient and keep working at it, and it might change over time. Um, this is where this little beauty comes into play, which. I call the bad boy dumbbell, patent pending by the way, um, it's a 
as you can see, it's a shake weight with a uh, one kilogram um, wrist weight on each uh, on each side, and so um, that's like that's going some way into trying to even even them up, so to speak. But I'll leave you with one little thing. It is quite frustrating having like a lopsided body because um, whenever you're like, well, whenever you've got like some nice new clothes or something, it's always your left shoe or like the left side of a t-shirt or your favourite jumper that gets worn out and I think we can all agree that is really, really annoying.